Titus Town Brookshire, and the guy in the middle <laughs> is also with us. And that, of course, the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles at that time, and later the Washington Redskins, Sonny Jurgensen. And welcome. I'm Pat Summerall, really. That's Tom Brookshire, really. And that's really Sonny. You can call Sonny claimed Tom. he threw that for a touchdown. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> what about the St. Louis Cardinals? Well, I, Bud Wilkinson's a, I played against him in college at Oklahoma. That's 15 years out, and he came back, and Metcalf had gone north. One of the great third down players, I guess, in all of football. J.B. Kane is tied in, and if I did the injury list, I would sound like an orthopedic guy at the Mayo Clinic. But uh, they, they just had too many injuries at, at the skill positions, and right now Hart uh, has had the ball dropped on him, and I just think if, they, if you put it together, it's going to be a tough team to do it against today. Sonny, what about Dallas? Dallas, I think, has been plagued by turnovers. You know, they've had seven interceptions, six fumbles so far. Something kind of unusual for the Cowboys, and it's something going to have to watch out for today. Let's get to the action, gentlemen. It's a okay. sellout crowd, as I said. And the Dallas Cowboys just about ready to kick off. That is Raphael Septien, number one. Deep for the Cardinals, Willard Harrell, number 39, on the left side of your picture, and Willie Shelby on the other side. Septien and soccer style kicker who last year kicked for Los Angeles. He is ready. So are we. Dallas St. Louis will be underway. This has been a great rivalry over the last few years. And this would be Willie Shelby with good wedges in front. Woo! Down he goes Aaron Kyle. A fumble. And St. Louis keeps it. Aaron Kyle really turns Shelby upside down. I thought he fell on it. They'll call the ball dead at that point. This is going to be a tough play right out, right out of the gate. Here it comes. All right. This is a young man from Alabama. Kyle really hit him right at the knees, and ball and player makes contact with the ground. It's dead ball. Dead ball, yes. Good call. The stadium didn't like it, but... <laughs> Jim Hart, Steve Jones, and Wayne Morris behind the quarterback. Steve Jones on first down, stopped by one Ed Jones. Imagine a St. Louis team that's only averaging 96 yards rushing per game. I think that's been the toughest thing. Sonny, you know, if you don't have any kind of a ground game, it's darn tough to throw it, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> the offensive line. Finney's been hurt for two games. He's finally sounding back. And Deardorff is playing with a 40-pound brace on a 100-pound leg. <laughs> there are the receivers. Here are the backs. Second down. Outside goes Wayne Morris. The pursuit of Charlie Waters takes him right down. Well, nothing has really gone right for the Cardinals this year, obviously, with all the injuries they've had. But also, Hart could be setting a record for drop passes. Yeah, they said he hit uh, Jones a couple of times against the Redskins for TDs, huh? Here's the defense for Dallas. they got to be a little bit teed off after the Ram job last week. Too tall, Jeff Thropew, White, Martin. Randy White's only made two tackles in the last two games. The three linebackers, Hegman instead of Henderson. And the secondary, Washington instead of Barnes. Third down situation for the Cardinals, and Hart uh, give, gives to Wayne Morris. And again, nothing doing. The ball popped loose, but St. Louis will maintain possession. Mike Hegman, the first hitter. I'll tell you, all the tackles by Dallas have been very emphatic. That's about as hard as I've seen them hit the first series in a long time, Patrick. Unusual call, third and long to come up and just run a little off tackle play. Uh, it's like they're a little... Uh, conservative and not wanting to put it up. Butch Johnson will be back deep for the Dallas Cowboys and Steve Little, number one draft choice, the rookie from the University of Arkansas. Where all great kickers come from, right? <laughs> <laughs> Some of us they didn't let kick. Steve Little, who has not been off to a very good start, points to Johnson at the 35, the 37, he scrambles and dives and digs. Out to about the 40, stopped by Ken Green. Good field position for the Cowboys starting off here, starting out about their four, almost their 40 yard line. Nothing, nothing in the opening seconds of the first quarter from Texas Stadium. The Cowboys' first possession coming up. Roger Staubach. Patrick, you know what he said before the game? What? He threw the ball worse the last quarter against L.A. than he thinks he's ever thrown it since he started playing football. Tom Landry, his coach, verifies that. <laughs> As Robert Newhouse on first down. Here's the offensive line for Dallas. Donovan Scott, Fitzgerald, Rafferty, they'll probably alternate the guards and bring the plays in. And, of course, Big Frederick, who has done an outstanding job at right tackle. Receivers, some doubt. 
as to whether or not Drew Pearson would start, but he did and is the Got Dallas backfield right there. Drew had a little bit of a thigh bruise, but he said there's no way he wasn't going to play today with a young secondary. Dorsett and Newhouse, and Newhouse for the second consecutive play spins for two or three. John Zook made the first tackle, by the way. Here's that 34 defense the Cardinals line up in. Pollard, the big uh, New Orleans, former New Orleans rusher. Dawson in the middle, and he's the key, and Zook is playing like the Zook we used to see in Atlanta. He's playing very well. There are four linebackers, and there they are. All hitters. Carney's the big disturber there, number 55. And the secondary. Gill starting in linebacker there in, in place of Allman because he had a uh, high temperature. <clears throat> Third down. Dorsett moves out to the right. Starbuck gets it out to him. It'll be a first down. Dallas inside Cardinal territory. Steve Mills was the first man to make the hit, and he was wide open from the time he left the backfield. I thought it was a pretty good way to play it, though. I think the worst thing I can think of is to try to go up and play a, a short out by Tony Dorsett and stop it. He goes down and just hitches up. I think this is very conservative, and the cornerback was deep, but he didn't miss the tackle. And the best no third down team in football. I think he's completing 63% of his passes on third down, and he actually isn't completing that. That's the toughest time to throw. Yeah, that's a good point. Now he has a first at the St. Louis 47 as Newhouse and Dorsett shuffle around behind Staubach. Pearson comes in motion. The blitz is on, and Staubach has the perfect play. Billy Joe Dupree to the 30. Drops the football, and the Cardinals pick it up. Perry Smith has it for St. Louis, and he might be gone. By Tony Hill and finally Dorsett. And Newhouse made the tackle. Billy Joe Dupree I, all the way down to I, the 20-yard line. Pat, fumbled. I can't remember the last time he fumbled one after he caught it. It's a good play. He rolls away, Sonny, and throws back to the tight end. Sensabaugh is lost. Number 20 is really in trouble. But what's the tackle he makes? He goes right for the left arm, and that's where B.J. is carrying the ball. reason he was so free is because they came on a blitz. It does pop loose. I'll tell you, Perry can run with it. Maybe Bud ought to put him on offense. First down, Cardinals, the line of scrimmage, the Dallas 38 as Hart hits Gray. He jumps and jukes and picks up a couple as Mike Hegman made the first contact along with Mark Washington. Well, there's Bud on the sidelines. I'll tell you one thing, if any man can teach football, it's, it's Bud, though. He's a very basic guy, and it's still blocking and tackling. Did I understand you to say that you played football against him in college? Not against him in college, against his teams. Oh. <laughs> Wait a second. Be honest. <laughs> but they were some good teams. Be honest, Tom. <laughs> Second down, eight yards to go. Dallas 36, the line of scrimmage as the Cardinals shift around. Steve Jones, the ball carrier. Ed Jones, Jethro Pugh, Harvey Martin, Mike Hegman all on the pilot. Pat, the, the offensive formation they start from is sort of an old wishbone look and the tight end moves the Sonny, you said something that it's only good if it's done quickly. Well, they, when they shift out of it, they, they allow the defense to make the adjustment when they shift up that tight end. They originally went to it, I think, because of lack of tight ends. They didn't have any, and they had to get some blocking, so they put another back in there. Eason Ramson. Ramson shifts out to the right. Coming for Pat Chilly. Hart under pressure and had to unload too quick. Mark Washington on the coverage. Cliff, Cliff Harris safety blitz again. And I'll tell you, Hart didn't even get his arm back that time. I don't know how Jimmy threw it as well as he did. Cleveland and Pittsburgh are in overtime now. 9-9, that score. The Browns playing them tough at Three Rivers Stadium. The Browns had a couple of long ones called back in that game early. Two touchdowns, that's right. Number one draft choice is going to punt it for the corner. He really hasn't been kicking uh, as well as he does in practice and all. I guess a rookie kicker is tough. And Steve Little. Yeah, it's a good one. Too good. It'll come out to the 20. Steve Little, who had such a spectacular career for the Razorbacks. What was he telling you, Pat? Something about the uh, football? said the ball was harder to kick because the ball itself is harder than the college football. <laughs> <laughs> so, high compression. 
Dallas first down at their own 20. The Cardinals will show them a 3-4 defense. The 34 is not just something that automatically stops everybody, though. And if you're a middleman, in this case, the Cardinals is Dawson. We'll take a look at Dawson because if he can't seal and handle that, the offensive uh, triumvirate in there, you're in real trouble playing the 34. They shift around again on defense, and Dallas gives the inside hand off the field. He breaks a couple of tackles. He's got eight yards. Sends the ball. Looked like Roger waited for him to shift around before he finally called the playoff. Watch the blocking in the middle. You have to go one way or the other. They played it straight up that time. Fitzgerald did an excellent job oh, on, say on Dawson then. Really drove him back off the line of scrimmage. And that's what caused the big Watch opening. This. Now, they tried to seal in a little bit. Pollard moved into the gap, and they still blew him right out of there. And Dawson couldn't hold the center. If that man on the nose takes the wrong side, Katie bar the door. Yes, Dorsett into the secondary. Dorsett fumbles, and the Cardinals have it sensible. Two turnovers already for the Dallas Cowboys. A fumble by Dupree and now by Dorsett. Dorsett has fumbled 12 times now in the 17 games he's played. And you know, in college, he did not fumble the football. I talked to Gil Brandt about it uh, before the ball game. Maybe it's because the ball is harder. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand that. But uh, he isn't protecting the ball. And, he, and 12 fumbles, 17 games, a lot of fumbles. People, if you get the reputation of being a fumbler, people go after that ball, don't they? Yeah, and let's, let's see if Jimmy Hart tries to jump on and get on the board first with an opportunity here. 8.20 left first quarter, line of scrimmage, the Dallas 44. Ramson moves. The Cardinals move. Pickup of about eight yards by Wayne Morris. This is the Wayne Morris we saw against Minnesota when he had 180 yards that day. It was the darndest rushing day I've ever seen. They, they really just handled uh, Randy White that time, didn't they? Blew him off the line a little bit. Simplest playing football, just a direct handoff. He just spun and ha handed the ball off to Morris and uh, picks up nine. Big Bob Young is the guard in front of Randy White. First down, D.D. Lewis on the tackle. Some effort, some effort by Morris that time because the whole gang was waiting for him right at the corner. Cardinals look like they want to take it to him a little bit, don't they? They are 0-3. And, and surprisingly with a great attitude too, Pat, and talking to the players down on the field and also talking with Bud. Uh, he feels that they're really playing hard and things that just, just haven't gone their way. They line up in the wishbone, and then the tight end shifts out. That's the right. for Mel Gray. Wayne Morris was so open he couldn't believe it. Stay on the ground to catch a football. He had no reason to jump. Jumped in the air for no reason at all. Looks like a slam dunk. <laughs> Watch Morris now just hesitate, slip through. Gray's going for the corner, and Kyle's gone with him, and there's nobody around. No reason to jump. The ball was hit him in the chest. You have to do two things. When you jump, you have to jump, then you got to catch it. If you stay on the ground, you can just catch it, right? Then you got to apologize to Jim Hart, huh? <laughs> he has to. That's the final score. Pittsburgh 15-9 over Cleveland. That's the final. Hart fires. Caught. On a rebound, he was hit by Cliff Harris. Ramson made the catch the tight end. Caught that one twice. Once before he was hit and once after he was hit. Good play. They still have about four yards to go as you look at the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Tom Landry. They had some very astute comments, I thought, about the loss to Los Angeles last week, saying that really that was our first test and we flunked it badly. Mel Gray's on the flanker side. Hart looks left. Weak side swing pattern and a great catch this time. Here's the one that once in a while you drop and he catches this one. I wasn't sure he had it with his back to us like that. Well, he dropped one and now he really makes a good catch. Good throw by Hart. That, of course, is Wayne Morris who made that catch. You look at the back now of Cliff Harris. And this is against the nickel defense. Not many teams get away with this one. Looks like Preston Pearson coming out of the backfield. Same type of pattern he runs. It is a Cardinal first down. The line of scrimmage, the Dallas 19. 5.50 left to play first quarter. No score yet. 
Fake is to Otis. Hart trying to screen. He gets Otis. Otis struggles inside the 10 to about the 8. Jim Otis has been playing against Dallas since 1973 and has never scored. Well, he almost did then. The one thing that Otis always gave you was every darn thing he has. At 210 pounds, he wasn't the fastest. He almost had 1,000 yards one year rushing. He did just make 1,000. Watch this effort, though, after the tackle is made. Not known for his pass-catching ability. Doesn't catch a lot of passes, but uh, snuck in and found an opening in. It'll be first and goal at the nine for St. Louis. As again, they shift Pat Tilly and Mel Gray on the same side, and Gray starts in motion. Hart has Mel Gray, and he dropped it. Mark Washington, closest cowboy. And Aaron Kyle, there were two of them that had him zeroed in. I guess the best way to play Mel is to cover him early, like when he has breakfast in the morning, go sit next to him and get used to it. <laughs> uh, final score, Washington Redskins 23, the New York Jets 3, and those Redskins remain unbeaten, even without Jurgensen. Excellent football. <laughs> They're playing better all the time. Another couple of touchdown passes today by Joe Feisman. Second and goal at the nine here at Texas Stadium, the Cardinals. After re recovering two fumbles from Dallas. Now threatened. Gray. They do more than threaten. Mark Washington was the Dallas defender, but Mel Gray, one-on-one, -on -one, is just about an impossible task. And I'll tell you, nobody plays better against the best team in football than Mel Gray. It's a short out. And you know they're looking for it. That's all you're thinking about. It's close to the end zone. You have solo coverage. But you got to get closer to him in that. That Look new rule, Tom, really makes it tough to cover on single back there, especially backed up around the goal line, doesn't it? Well, I think Jim Hart's throwing the ball very well. Sonny? Same thing. I do, too. Uh, he's uh, been very accurate. The same thing as played both of these teams is happening today. The... Uh, Drop passes on St. Louis and the turnovers that have plagued Dallas. Now is the veteran Jim Bakken that just made it 7 to nothing. Roger Worley holding. And with 4.54 left to play in the first quarter, the Cardinals are up by 7. Steve Little set the kickoff for the St. Louis Cardinals. Butch Johnson and Doug Denny for Dallas. In college, Steve Little had... 70% of his kickoffs into or out of the end zone. This was a pretty good shot. That would have been out in college. Juggles by Johnson. He's to the 15. 18-yard line will be where Roger Staubach and the Dallas offensive unit start to operate. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. Big improvement in that category for St. Louis already, though. They've been averaging, what, 34 yards a return, and, boy, they really pinned him inside the 20. That one touchdown really made a difference. It seems like it's picked him up a little bit, doesn't it? Tony Hill splits wide to the left for Dallas, and Drew Pearson is wide right. Newhouse, Dorset, the setbacks. Roger to Hill. Easily done. Gets one of the best cornerbacks in football. A fellow that his big claim to fame is that he intercepted one of Jurgensen's passes and went 55 with it. He still says that, doesn't he, son? I hate to hear about that. Roger too. Worley. If he'd have played the defense correctly, he wouldn't have been there. <laughs> <laughs> Never give up. <laughs> it was a Dallas first down. The completion Starbuck to Tony Hill. 441 left to play first quarter. 7-0 St. Louis. Dorset tries to slide inside. Stopped by Randy Gill. One of those four Cardinal linebackers is Starbucks. Surveys the situation. Mark Arneson helped out. Cardinals have been very effective against passing attacks, but as we know with Dallas, they've got so darn many ways they can come out of the, the their odd formations with pass patterns. And the one with Dorsett in motion is scary as a defensive person. I When I see him in motion coming out, I think I'd want to retire again. On second down, they have two tight ends in the game now. Dallas does. Saldi on the right, Billy Joe Dupree on the left, and this is Newhouse. Cardinal defense swarms, and a flag is down. Going to be holding against Dallas, and the referee, who is Bob Frederick, will let us know 
who the culprit was in just a minute. Steve Neal's let the tackler. I think 68 might have done it. But but the Giants. Giants. 14 nothing over San Francisco in the first quarter. Do we call them the Jersey Giants or the New York? They still the New York Giants, right? They like to be that. Okay. Is there some question? <laughs> That's Steve Holding, number 71. 71 is Andy Frederick, the right offensive tackle. The rest of the officials, by the way, referee Bob Frederick, the umpire Lou Palazzi, the headlinesman is Sid Seaman, line judge is Art Holtz, the back judge Bill Swanson, the side judge Bill uh, Vince Jacob, and the field judge is Bob Workman. Pretty tough call for Roger right now. So second down situation, the shotgun gets the forward handoff to Dorsett. He swings to the outside, but the pursuit catches. Steve Neals led those in red. Pollard works his way all the way to the sidelines, too. Your defensive end play is really important if you're playing the 34. He's still talking to Tony Dorsett, too. A little intimidation, as they say. Watch now. Watch as the inside hand up off the shotgun. They get out in front. Great block by him. I believe that was Scott that made the good block again. Was. And Pollard gets into it and did a little talking. So it'll be third and ten for Dallas. Their record two and one. Cardinals have gone to that nickel defense. Dallas goes to the guns to try to shoot the nickel apart. Blitz. It held up for a while. Number 57, Mark Arneson. The sack on Roger Staubach. Went with four down linemen and then blitzed that offside linebacker. And uh, I thought they had it picked up pretty well. And Arneson went by the block. They just had excellent coverage in the secondary. Had everybody covered like a glove. And signed Kenny Stone to cover Preston Pearson coming out of the backfield. They were certainly looking for that pass. Covered like a glove. Is that the way quarterbacks talk? Covered like a glove. <laughs> a little work on the Cardinal bench. Number 78, Ron Yankowski. Their trainer, their trainer ought to get a bonus. I've never seen so many injuries, you know, that have hit Bud Wilkinson's team. Doctor of the Year award. <laughs> Danny White, the punt for the Cowboys, catches a pretty good one. Willie Shelby at the 35. Tries to set up the punt return, breaks a couple of tackles, almost shook the whole thing loose. Stopped by Guy Brown, finally number 59. The linebacker from Houston, University of... And the Cardinals will take it over with three minutes, 34 seconds left to play. First quarter, St. Louis 7, Dallas nothing. There he is, Bud Wilkinson. So many great years at Oklahoma. We were speculating that he might have gone to the Cotton Bowl this morning instead of coming here. Hart is going for Gray, and he's turned it on. Step on Mark Washington. Charlie Waters back there too. And Waters, I believe, actually picked up ground on Mel Gray. And Washington really played it well, didn't he? All right, watch what happened on the line of scrimmage. We'll see it after the throw. Look at this recovery right on the throw. I'm telling you, when you can make up any ground, as you say on Mel Gray, you're moving it. Here's what Harvey Martin did. He and Finney lock up. Finney using the new pass <laughs> method of blocking. <laughs> What is that? Get him if you can, right? It's called the Fred Astaire method. <laughs> Second and ten. 327 left to play first quarter as Hart runs the draw play to Otis. Otis gets two or three. Randy White led the tacklers. Boston losing to Toronto 6-4. After eight innings. They are one game back of the Yankees, as I'm sure you must know by now. Well, what about this one? Now you're against the nickel defense on third and long, and Larry Cole comes in there. What's Jimmy Hart thinking about in that huddle, Duke? Well, you know, for the first time, he's calling his plays, which is uh, important, I think. And he says he's never enjoyed football more. Opportunity to call his football play. Steve Jones and Jim Otis. The blitz comes, and Hart gets away from it. Look out. Complete. Incredible. Heck of a stretch. Jim Childs made that catch. 
Look at the pressure on Harden. Well, Benny Barnes came in from the secondary. Watch Harvey Martin and Barnes get there at the same time, and how Hart steps up and... Uh, he avoids this. this. Who knows? Now watch the throw right in the face of Too Tall, and it was complete. That's when the quarterback gets up and does, isn't sure, right, Duke? Oh, yeah. No wonder he had a jump to get it over Too Tall. And he's, he's got to be asking himself, did I call that? <laughs> <laughs> I must have called her blocking wrong. Sure takes the responsibility off the coach, though, doesn't it? As they measure, 235 left to play first quarter. The Cardinals leave Dallas 7-0. Cliff Harris says it's about a foot short. Would appear that they are going to go for it. On fourth and about a foot. Pretty big gamble here in the oh. first quarter. I'll say, especially when you're ahead 7-0. about the length of the football. Jim Otis and Steve Jones, the running backs. 34 and 35. Should be Otis. It is Otis. Over the top. I'll tell you one thing. That's a gutsy call. I bet the people in St. Louis love the attitude, though, that Bud's put into the team. Huh? Let's go for it and try to win the game. You know it? What a great confidence builder this is for the offensive team to gamble like this for them to show them that he has confidence calling a play like that. Well, that offensive line isn't chopped chicken liver anyway. That's a darn good offensive line. They've just been nicked with injuries the whole darn time that they've been in camp and all. He really popped off the line on the snap count that time. A minute 43 left first quarter. Hart gives to Otis again. Somebody lost a shoe back in the backfield. It was Deardorff. Jace Salby injured his right forearm for Dallas, and he has been taken to the dressing room for examination. Tom, yes. didn't you say that Deardorff there, the kneeling down, that they have a 40-pound brace on? That's right. He wasn't supposed to even play. He's got a strained knee. And I remember when he went from 300 and something, when he had the broken jaw, he went from 305 to 250, you know. And did they taped him up this morning, and he went out in front of the motel and did some running? <laughs> Knocked over a doorman or two with a 40-pound brace. <laughs> He's well over 300. Otis. And the arms of Randy White. Jim Bakken, who still looks like he's about 22 or 23. From, from about 35 in, he's about as true as you can be with that foot still. CBS Sports Spectacular next week, the Woodward Stakes. World three-day equestrian championships. That's all next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 Central and Pacific. The 25th running of the Woodward, live coverage from Belmont Park. The second leg of the fall triple crown for three-year-olds and up. Seattle Slough, of course, won the first one. You'll see that live on the Sports Spectacular next week. Hart. Mel Gray. Boy. Does Mel Gray like to come to Dallas? Isn't that something? I don't blame him. Remember last year, he almost personally upset the Cowboys. Watch this move. He drives you off. He, of course, used to have the 9-3-5 speed. He still has enough to back you off. Does it remind you of anything? Last Sunday, Ron Jesse. Ron Jesse's big day against this Dallas defense, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. They'll swap into the field, and the sunshine will become a factor. It is St. Louis 7, <laughs> Dallas nothing. <laughs> Cardinals have the football. First and 10. Line of scrimmage, the Dallas 29. Pat Summerall with Sonny Jurgensen. Tom Brookshire, Jim Otis, bangs inside the 25 to about the 23. Stopped by middle linebacker Bob Brunick. Well, they are attacking the Dallas, the pride of Dallas, that doomsday defense with the flex and all. They don't seem to be impressed. Hey, another overtimer, huh? Denver, Kansas City, 17 apiece in Kansas City. I believe he's doing some job with that wing tee. They keep the ball all the time. I wonder how Denver got 17 points. Otis, a five-yard pickup. Baxton in motion and Hart to throw. Oh, yeah. A little nudge from Heckman to Otis. Heckman hit him <laughs> over the five-yard barrier, and this is a normal defensive play. He also pushed him while the ball was in the air. Well, you can't push him anytime. Doesn't make a difference whether the ball's in the air or not. Other than that, it was a good play. But, you know, uh, Stallings said he went through things in scrimmages with an official here just to show the guys what you can and can't do under the new rule. Now all he did was just brush Otis. There's the push. See? 
Now that used to be a good play. In fact, it still no, is. That it was never it. a good play. You cannot push a guy in the back when the ball's on the way. <laughs> How can you call it a good play? It's <laughs> the way they coach it. Blame the coaches. First down, the Cardinals. At the 21, Hart gets back to Steve Jones. And Jones inside the 15 to the 14. Aaron Kyle, I believe, made the first contact for Dallas. Watch it again. Jones came in with a 4.1 average, but they've only actually had about a, you know, he only had 130 yards, but looks like today they're getting off the block. They're making good blocks right at the point of attack. They're finding some weaknesses in that defense. Uh, this doesn't look like an 0-3 team to me. Those two early turnovers, the fumble by Billy Joe Dupree, and the fumble by Dorsett, and the Cardinals have kept the ball most of the time. Hart, draw play Otis. To the 12. Randy White on the bottom of that stack. Now you're getting down in Mel Gray country again, too, where you have sort of solo coverage. They get that solo coverage. You can be sure they'll be going to him over there. You know, he's been hurt. And I think he played, what, the last half of, of the Washington game, and today he looks like he might be almost full speed. This is a pretty smart move. They come in here, third and short yardage. They come in with Tom Brahaney as a, uh, another receiver for blocking purposes. He's number 51. He has checked in with the officials, and they have notified Dallas, so it won't be a surprise if he catches a pass. He is lined up tight left. I would be surprised if he caught a pass. <laughs> Pretty close. I think he got it. I think you're right. Nothing fancy straight at him. They're really coming off the ball. Brunig on the bottom of the stack again. Boy, the schedule that Bud Wilkinson is working against. You're starting to think about what they've got going in front of them. Miami, Dallas again. Okay, you're down the line of scrimmage. You people be the, the officials on this one. Where was he, right about the line? He got it, huh? He got it. It's a first down just outside the 10. Not quite first and goal. 12.45 left before the half. Cardinals lead by a touchdown, and Otis scrambles down close to the five. Well, you said it. They are coming off the football, that offensive line, really beating them and defeating them at the line of scrimmage. They ran right at Randy White this time and got he and Harvey Martin turned outside and just popped it right back inside. Bob Young turned him around, didn't he? Sure did. Bob Young weighs about 290. Randy White about 250. Both very strong. <laughs> Inside handoff, Jones is tripped up at the line of scrimmage by Mike Heckman, I believe. Some tackle. That's the kind that really hurt, too, you know, to hit him right at the knees. Right. Well, here we are, Tom. We're down to that third down situation, third and five. We'll watch where Mel Gray goes. And see if they can help defensively. You want to get a linebacker kicked out to help you, but you're really weak in the defense down there if you do. Jim Hart has decided... This call is crucial enough for him to come visit with the coach. And so he has called a timeout. That's the Cardinals' first one. St. Louis 7, Dallas nothing. They can get a first down just outside of the goal line, huh? Just barely. That's not the goal line where the ball is now. That's the five. About the five and a half, I guess. Short yardage offense. Otis and Jones, and that Brahaney is in again at tight end. Hart rolls, Hart throws, out of the reach to Wayne Morris. Charlie Waters on the coverage. He I'll made the you. right decision then to throw it away. But Charlie Waters is some kind of a safety man. I saw him turn and see Jones come out, and he really dug it to get back in the corner, and he made him throw it too high. It'll be Jim Bakken then from about the 12. So we'll make this a 22-yard effort by that veteran of 17 years. Two out of three this year. One for two between the 30 and the 39. And one for one about where he is right now. He doesn't miss many from here. One white shoe, one black shoe. <laughs> one field goal. <laughs> Ten nothing. 
Well, you kickers are really weird, you know that? They really are. They... <laughs> What's weird about that? Jim Two-Shoe Bakken, huh? <laughs> 11 minutes, 36 seconds left. The crowd at Texas Stadium a little bit stunned by the score, 10-0. Steve Little set to kick off for the Cardinals. They lead Dallas 10-0. It's going to be Doug Dennison at the 8. Oh, good block up in front of him. And Dennison is finally cut down at the 28. But one of the Cardinal players went flying. Don't forget the World Series of Golf next Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time and Sunday at 4 Eastern Time. It's Nicholas, Bean, Trevino, Nor. Mahaffey, the bunch. You gonna be there doing that? Yes, sir. Where are you gonna be? Uh, gosh, if I know. <laughs> Somewhere out at the Baltimore Canyon, out at sea, probably. Uh, I think you'll be in Atlanta, you and Sonny, next week. Against those surprising Giants, the Falcons and the Giants. Drew Pearson goes in motion to pitch back to Dorset. He is smothered and really hit by Steve Neals. A couple of weeks ago, the people were saying that the Cowboys might never be scored upon, much less ever be beaten. This is a real quiet stadium down here right now. A lot of people thought that they were uh, Cardinals were 17 point underdogs, and it's quite a quite a swing. Is that the reason for the quietness? <laughs> <laughs> Second down, four yard pickup by Dorsett. It didn't look like that much. Second six. Atlanta two, Tampa Bay nothing. Home run by <laughs> Jeff Burroughs. Tony Hill. Out of bounds. No good. Pretty good pattern. It, and Roger read it perfectly. It looked like Tony might have just wanted to make sure of the ball before he looked down to the feet. He looked down once, and then one of them caught it, and he was out. He got pushed out outside of the uh, rotation that time and had to split the zone. Roger made a good throw, though. Look at He's just out on the white carpet there. Well, I'll tell you, after he catches it, number 80 is frightening. He can really swing it. Jim Hart is three out of seven. Roger Staubach, three out of four. Staubach will make number five attempt right here. Look out, Raj. Got it. Preston Pearson. <laughs> Inevitably, on third down, he comes from somewhere. Now look at this pass, almost like an old tailback. Here's the rush, and Pollard really comes through fast. Roger runs to his left. Sonny, that's not easy to do, that is. That's the toughest throw in football. I don't understand how Pollard got there. Somebody just thinks Scott missed his block. He just uh, made a little move and came right around. Now look at him. He's running down his throat. He has to throw the ball moving to his left. So what an accurate throw he makes. It's Mark Arneson on the tackle. Preston gets to work on a linebacker when he comes out of the backfield in that situation, and he almost always works it well. Here is Newhouse for a loss. Drew Pearson's record is still intact then, huh? That's, what, 43 straight games? Well, Randy Gill really came up and made a good play then. Detroit 6. Seattle nothing. That's a first quarter score. Lions, Lions have had some trouble scoring points, too tell you that St. Louis does not look like an 0-3 ball club. I'm really impressed. They came prepared. Nine and a half minutes left to play before the half. Second and 12 situation. Passing situation almost certainly for Roger, but from regular formation. Drew Pearson oh, has it. Still on his feet to the 35-yard line of St. Louis. Steve Neals slung him out of bounds. Young uh, Perry had some uh, linebacker help. It just got over the linebacker. Look at the right corner of your screen. You'll see the linebacker going back there. And then the gamble on the interception. And boy, any quarterback can tell you, you can't gamble on the interception there. A game of inches, huh? That's Perry Smith. who gambled and lost. Ball up to St. Louis, 76, uh, 36. Beg your pardon. Jim Hart out, Ballard. Here's Dorsett looking for some place to go and finally finds it. He got four out of what looked like a loss. Oh, that quickness. I'll tell you one thing, though, St. Louis is really hitting. I'm really impressed. You know the play that Pearson caught? 
they made good recovery to hold that to a very slight gain, really, when you think about it. He was down those sidelines. Dorsett picked up four. Yeah, it'll make it second and six. Newhouse and Dorsett behind Roger Stallback in the Dallas backfield. Inside handoff, Newhouse with some room. And the house bangs to the 25. St. Louis just invited them to run that hole. Pollard actually moved inside the tackle, Rex to Dawson, and they dared him to come there, and that's right where Newhouse clobbered him. Good call. He's a darn smart little runner. And a good runner. Yes, sir. Underrated. Difficult to tackle, too, isn't he? Where will you tackle somebody like that, John? By the, by the nose guard. <laughs> Newhouse got it up for a Dallas first down, and for the first time today, the crowd reacts a little bit. They've been in a little bit of shock at the way St. Louis has performed so far, and I guess you'd have to say the way Dallas has performed too. It's been sort of sluggish at best. Going to throw on first down. Throw back five out of six throwing so far. What do you think, quarterback? Mr. Landry, don't ask me. <laughs> In that case, I know him better than you do. I'll say no. Yes. <laughs> Quick screen to Tony Hill, who is an excellent runner after he catches the ball. Andy Frederick came out to try to throw the block. Mike Sensiball made the tackle. Had, had a bad tempo on the screen, though. First, Roger has to do a tiptoe and throw it high to get it there. And then Tony had to wait too long to get it underway. That play had been about a second earlier taking place. He might have had some yardage. Got to give Bob Pollard credit for that. He came across and got in the uh, line of uh, flight of the ball and it forced Roger to throw the ball over it. Pollard can pass rush, I'll tell you that. He got six yards on a play that looked out of sync. That's Dorsett. Ken Stone led the tacklers along with Tim Carney. Dorsett was a little late getting up. Gang tackling. Well, he had a tough and bruising afternoon last week against Los Angeles where they held him to two yards average per carry. 19 carries, 38 yards. Those things last a while. Third down, two yards to go. From the 17, Stavak rolls right. Newhouse, first down, Dallas. Boy, there's nothing like having the experience that Roger Stavak has, though. He could have forced that a little bit if he'd have been a young quarterback, and he waited for some arm to go by and then just lays it off to Newhouse. Watch his action now on the throw. Real good play here. There, he just sort of waits for the arm to come up and go by and then throws it. He's a cool one, isn't he? Right. Very safe pass. Sonny was mentioning before how happy Jim Hart was to be calling the plays. Starbucks plays are called by Tom Landry from the sideline. They're shuffling the guards back and forth. Lawless and Rafferty. Dorsett goes in motion right. Long count. Newhouse gets the carry. Cuts back into the middle inside the 10. Still on his feet down to the 7. Carney again on the tackle. Again, against that 34, if you start like you're going right and then cut back against it, Dawson had to react and move by. And Dawson got back into the tackle, but just a little late. That nose position is so tough. Now watch number 73. He plays what he feels, which is the blocking pressure, gets back in, but Newhouse lives on second effort. Again, a good job by Fitzgerald, then. Second and five situation. Still the setbacks, Newhouse, Dorsett. Dorsett bangs close and gets in. Dallas touchdown. Sense of all. Took the ride. Guess who's come to life? <laughs> the state of Texas. Somebody woke up. That's only the fifth touchdown rushing for the Cowboys. And I think this one was very important to their cause. They really took it in. No fancy stuff here. It's a straight drive. Newhouse gets a good block on the outside. And then it's Dorsett's speed and power. You know, he's stronger than he looks. Key blocked by Burton Lawless. Fitzgerald did a good job, but so did Lawless on the right side. Here is Raphael Septien. 
Six minutes, 23 seconds left to play before the half. The Cardinals still lead, but it's been cut to three. It's 10-7, St. Louis. Raphael Septian is number one. Willard Harrell and Willie Shelby. Deep for St. Louis as Shelby has to go back into his end zone and come out. That kickoff from Septian. Pursuit is excellent. Mark Arneson was the key cardinal blocker. Let's see if Septian gets in there. You, we said your kickers were weird. Let's see if he gets into the tackle. My gosh, he's in there digging, didn't he? Yeah. Good Bruce, tackle. Bruce Hutter helped out. How many tackles do you figure you had in your career? Pardon me? Yeah, how many tackles <laughs> do you suppose you had? Did you make some? Really, you did. Uh, not many. You, I ran most of the time. <laughs> First sideline. First down, St. Louis. Yes, to the bench. Wayne Morris, the ball carrier, stopped by Jethro Pugh. And Waters in on another tackle. He's got to be one of the top support safety men in the business, though. I really like the way Charlie comes up and makes the tackle and gives himself up. He said that last week against the Ramsey, it felt like buildings were falling on top of him. He had to take on that Bryant about five times. They made a lot of tackles. Harris, Waters did it. In fact, Harris is the leading tackler on the team. And when your free safety man has to do all that, things are not all that good. Wayne Morris, again, the ball carrier. This time, it's Randy White. I'm telling you, Finney, Finney and company really pushed Randy White out of the hole. Now, you're from right behind the blocking pattern. Now, watch what happens. Young, Finney, Banks, I'm telling you, they got that Dallas defensive line on skates right now. i tell you, with those new blocking rules, it's easier to keep them in the direction you'd like to keep them going. When you can extend your arms like that. Punch right out at them, huh? Third down. Five minutes left to play before the half as Hart fires outside for Pat Tilly. Caught seven passes last week, now has one today. Tell you one thing, Tilly's got some kind of hands. That's the tough catch. What a good catch that was. Just a little hitch pattern. I just go straight up the field about three yards, enough for the first down. Look at this. What's the catch he has to make on the ball? It's behind him. He goes back, cradles it, and then still keeps control of the football. It's number 14 for the year for him. Aaron Kyle made the tackle. Tilly's only 171 pounds. Third year man. Look at this. The Giants 17. San Francisco nothing. Andy White made the tackle on Steve Jones. This is important drive, I think, for the Cardinals. You know, after the Cowboys going down and scoring, for them to come back and do something offensively. At least take some time up doing whatever they're doing. Let the defense take a little bit of a breather. The Cardinals have two timeouts left in this half. The Cowboys have three. Tutal played that last run pretty tough. Tutal goes about 275, 280. Look at that score. That's that an is a final. Game. That's the final now. Denver 23-17 over Kansas City. Hart firing deep. Got Mel Gray. Mark Washington made the tackle, but again, a good throw from Hart. I tell you, Jimmy Hart is getting good protection, too. I watched Finney working on Harvey Martin that time. Watch the center of your screen. They came with the weak line soccer blitz. D.D. Lewis is picked up. Jimmy Hart hits him right in the numbers, and nobody runs a prettier post than that than Mel Gray. What a perfect throw that uh, he makes. Uh, watch D.D. Lewis coming in. He kind of fakes. It's kind of a delayed blitz. Comes in, but he gets picked up. Good blocking there. Morris picked him up. Huh? Much more than enough for a first down. The line of scrimmage now. The Dallas 37. Three minutes left to play before the half. Not too much to smile about. Hope you're a Cowboy fan at the moment. Just an average pretty face down here, huh? <laughs> Cardinals bang away in time. This time Harvey Martin made the tackle on Wayne Morris, but not before good yardage was picked up. You know, not all the girls in Texas are that pretty, but it's darn near that close. You know, that. look at this now. You can just one after the other. One's pretty and the other. It really is uh, amazing. 
And they're serious about the Cowboys, too, which I don't know if all cheerleading outfits are, but they certainly are. Some of them are having some difficulty. <laughs> some of them had to turn into uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> or change uniforms. <laughs> a lot of things happening around the league. Six-yard gain. That's Steve Jones again. This time for no gain. Bob Brunick, the middle linebacker, who is second on that Cowboy defensive unit in the number of tackles made so far. Well, Pat, what I'm thinking is, you realize what J.V. Kane would have meant to this team? That he is not only a superior tight end, but he's one that can jump out of the ballpark and catch them. He would have been really something for Wilkinson with Hart throwing the way he is now and everything. Two-minute notification is now being given both to Tom Landry and to Bud Wilkinson. They lost four starters off that offensive unit from last year. They could really be tough. One of the cheerleaders that slipped and fell. The on the injured reserve list at the moment, but still a fan. Don't forget to stick around at the half when we'll join Brent. Jane and Irv, scores and highlights from around the league. There was a very controversial play, we understand, in the Pittsburgh-Cleveland game. They'll take a look at that and also the cheerleader situation around the league. I'll let you be the judge. Incomplete. As Aaron Kyle really cut into the back of Mel Gray. I love that. Knock him down and help him up. Kind of surprised they went back to Aaron Kyle's side. They've had the success on the other side. Benny Barnes had started the year as Dallas left cornerback. Mark Washington has taken that over today as Barnes had a foot operation during the offseason and really has not snapped back. This is a pretty good range for Buck, and that's 46 yarder will be, huh? It'll be 47 where Roger Worley has his hand. Might just be enough. It is not. Just wide to the right. And the ball, of course, will come back to the line of scrimmage. One minute, 52 seconds left to play before the half. Dallas with three timeouts left. <laughs> A minute and 52 seconds left to play before the half. Shotgun formation for Dallas. They trail by three. Cardinals have played an excellent first half. Ricochet comes off the hand of Bob Pollard and Tim Carney, I think, also got a hand on it. A little bit of pressure on Roger. What kind of a two-minute drill does he like to go with, son? He just, he like to nip away at a couple of sidelines and then hit a, a pattern down the middle with Drew coming through? Well, the situation will dictate it, Tom, but uh, well, they, they've, done this, they've done this so often and they've been in this, this type of situation. Well, they, they, they're going to try to get the ball to Pearson. They'll try to get it to Dorsett and give it to him short and let him run with the thing. Thought you were going to answer me for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that was as commercial as I could be on the answer. A minute 48 left to play before the half. Second and 10 for Dallas. Line of scrimmage, your own 30. Blitz is on, and Staubach goes middle. Billy Joe Dupree, his second catch of the day, and wrapped up in the arms of one Ken Stone. First down, Dallas. As I told you, they like to go to Pearson and Dorsett. Why do they do it? Throws it to Dupree. And here's the hurry up in the Cardinals now. Their responsibility is to get back. That's another new development this year from the rule changes. The shotgun pass is low, but Roger makes the scoop. Preston gets out of bounds. One out of two, I'm right, huh? Preston Incredible. Pearson. How about when you're running back as the leading receiver on the team, huh? Jay Salby, the, I hate to call him a backup tight end for Dallas because he is so valuable and is utilized so much, has a fractured bone in his right arm. So the Cowboys are down to one tight end, Billy Joe Dupree. Yes, Robert Steele would have to uh, come in and play that position. He's big enough to play it. Well, Billy Joe wears pretty well, though. He hadn't missed many football games since he came from Michigan State. Robert Steele is a rookie from North Alabama who only weighs 190 pounds. Not your ideal size for a tight end. The blitz is on again. The flutter ball from Starbuck is caught by Butch Johnson, but out of bounds. Not one of his better throws. Timing wasn't real good on that. Uh, Butch Johnson had already broken off the pattern, was coming back before the ball was ever delivered. And Perry Smith just shoved him out of bounds, which is certainly legal. Only time you can get a chance to hit anybody anymore is right on the edge of the playing field. <laughs> Nor on the bench. 
It'll be third and seven for Dallas. The sellout crowd at Texas Stadium has just been informed of the situation with Jay Saldi. He is out indefinitely. Fractured bone in his right forearm. Preston Pearson shifts out to the left. Dorsett closest to Starbuck in the backfield. And the shotgun this time has Dorsett staying in the pass pocket. And Roger tried to take off down in the clutches of Bob Pollard. Pollard has played excellent football today and in previous losses by St. Louis. He's been very effective. You always worry about containment of Roger, and I'll tell you, Pollard was making his move, but he didn't overcommit, so he really did make the tackle pretty close to that line of scrimmage. Over on a St. Louis bench. It's Pete Elliott, our old buddy, isn't it? Yeah. Bud Wilkinson, our old buddy. Well, he has to be pleased with the way his team has played, or has played here in the first half. Danny White, number 11, back. The Dallas Cowboys back in the sunshine. Those shadows, of course, play havoc with our cameramen and technicians and our pictures as well. White thunders this one. Willie Shelby at the five. Back out to the 20. I might have questioned his judgment early when he fielded it at the five, but now he's back to the 20. He might as well have. Hey, Cardinals are really not backing off. 29 seconds left to play before the half. Tuesday night, a bitter feud erupts over a school election in the second chapter of the outstanding new series, The Paper Chase. I caught that one last week. That's a really good series. And the one that follows that, one in a million, is the story of Ron LeFleur, the Detroit Tiger outfielder who went from the prison cell to being an all-star major league outfielder. That's on the CBS Tuesday night movies. That's the story, believe me, you want to see. Benny Barnes back in the game. Stop Wayne Morris. And there is our friend Whistlin' Ray. Hey, Whistlin's got some new tricks this year. Look at that. Uh, that's, that's a cardinal. Oh, that he is plucking. Oh, number one! Who's on Kenneth Bird? <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time he took the cigarette and put it in your new coat pocket? Yeah, a cashmere coat. He put a cigarette in it and put it out on it. And there was no hole in the coat, I should say, I guess. It's true. That's the end of the half, then, where the St. Louis Cardinals leading the Dallas Cowboys by three, 10-7. 65. We're at half at Texas Stadium in Dallas. Cardinals lead the Cowboys surprisingly 10-7. Neither team has arrived back on the field as yet. It'll be a few minutes before the action starts again. The Cardinals have dominated the first half. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Halftime at Texas Stadium. I am Pat Summerall again with Tom Brookshire and Sonny Jurgensen. And, Brookie, quickly, what's your impression of the Cardinals' the first half? Cardinal defense, they've been giving up, what, 240 yards rushing per game. They've held Dallas to 66 in the first half. An incredible job, I think, out of the 34. And Sonny said turnovers were the key in the beginning of the game, and that's held true. It certainly has. Uh, Dorsett fumbling, and, of course, a big play by Dupree after running down the sideline with a short yardage pass and picking up a big first down, then turning it back over. Again, turnovers plaguing Dallas. It's 10-7, St. Louis. So let's turn around for the action. And, you know, football is really an attitude game, and it looks to me like... Wilkinson has the Cardinals, where their attitude is sky high. I think they've really been very bullish. <laughs> there are some of those stats. St. Louis had 76 yards rushing, and Dallas had 66. How about uh, Jimmy Hart in that first uh, half, Sonny? I think both quarterbacks throwing the ball well, uh, very accurately, uh, picking their places to throw the ball, one 9 out of 15, and, of course, uh, Roger, 9 out of 12. A little better day, as you said. Uh, he said he threw worse in that last quarter last week than he's ever thrown. Steve Little lines a shot deep into the Dallas end zone. Butch Johnson brings it out. Butch down about the 27 where he bounced off that artificial turf. Stopped wow. by Randy Gill. And you know, there was a big hole that stayed open for about three seconds. And just as he got there, the Cardinals closed it back up. Now let's see if that defense continues to really take it to Dallas. And I'll tell you, Roger's been very careful. He hasn't wanted to 
No interceptions, right? WPRK in Cincinnati. What a super show that is. That's what our business is really like. That's a great show. <laughs> it's a radio station that rocks and rolls with laughter. That's not always true, but it's a super show followed by people. Phyllis George's new program. MASH, one day at a time, and then Lou Grant. Dorset. All that lineup we just gave you is tomorrow night here on CBS. Mike Dawson just took down Tony Dorsett with some help from Bob Pollard, Tim Carney, and the rest of the Cardinal defense. They've been superb. Dorsett got only a yard. What did he do in the first half? Dorsett had 41 yards in the first half on seven carries, so you can give him another yard maybe on eight. Second down, nine. Dallas scores 10-7. Cardinals lead. Roger Staubach looks down the middle. And Drew Pearson almost came back with a spectacular catch. Got one hand on it. Ken Stone made the tackle. Roger got a big rush. In fact, uh, I didn't know he was going to be able to stand in there and get it off. He had him open, though. Pearson wide open coming in. A little play action. Faking to Dorsett coming across. What's Randy Gill now? Number 59 comes swinging around that linebacker blitz spot. He really caught Roger in the ribs. He had a good chance to set and throw the ball, though, Tom. And uh, he just had it a little high for him. <laughs> well, now, I've never seen that before. He's getting an uh, analgesic ball. On, on, a, this is on a hamstring? To put on a hamstring. That's got to be legal, right? I guess. <laughs> I thought it was stick'em when I first saw it. I did, too. Third and ten. Roger Staubach operates from the shotgun and fires and underthrows. And again, he was under heavy pressure from the Cardinal defense. I think Bob Bell was in there to make the pass rush that time, and... Bob's been sort of a backup player on the defensive line, but he's doing a pretty good job. Let's see if they're doubling up on Zucker on the other side. He has really been playing well, number 63. He's taken inside. There come the blitzers through. That's Pat Donovan that's blocking on Zook. And Tom Landry continues to say how well he is playing. Donovan, that is, who was a defensive lineman in college. Danny White. Number 11. Ooh. Line shot again drives Willie Shelby way back to his 20 yard line, to his 19. But look out for this. Flag goes down as Shelby goes down too in the hands of Mike Heckman. Number 52 is the one they're going to catch for clipping, I think, on the Cardinals. That's uh, Westbrook's the young linebacker. Boy, it's hard not to clip them, you know, because. Uh, if there's somebody there, you hit them, and they happen to have their back turned to you. To the right of the screen, uh, you might be able to see it on the replay. We'll wait and get the call first. Bob Frederick will give that to us. The referee. There's the... Tripping on the kick return team. Ten yard penalty. Tripping. 52. 52. What's the right part of your screen? I've always felt like if you see one clip, you've seen them all, but we'll just go ahead and see the right part of your screen there. Right there. Willie Shelby had a little wall set up. His team still leads by three. That last punt by Danny White was a 53-yarder. Roger Staubach pacing around in front of Larry Cole and in front of the Dallas bench, and the Cardinals go on a quick count. Wayne Morris, the ball carrier, he played here at SMU. Had some great days last year. You realize that was the first penalty against St. Louis this afternoon? You can stay in a lot of football games if, you know, if you don't make the glaring mistakes that drop that flag on your head. That's it, Tom. They haven't made any crucial errors today, and that's one reason that uh, they're leading a football game 10-7. to 7. They've taken advantage of the Cowboys' mistakes. Otis. And Morris will wind up being the running backs after the tight end comes out. Big draw. Knocked down by Charlie Waters and a heck of a play. Hart started to hit his tight end who had gone in motion and then reloaded it and Waters started making his move. Looked like they had a double on Gray, the two safety men. From the end zone now. Watch he has Hart. to reload, yeah, Tom. That's it. 
That won't show up in the stats, but Ed Jones made him reload, and that enabled Charlie Waters to get there. Tom Landry. Year after year, one of the best dressed men in football. He's a good guy, too. He really is, you know? Sure is. Third down. Uh, flag goes down, and Harvey Martin just came and jumped into the face. Looks like a tackle jumped up at the count early. May have been Finney. Was Finney. I wonder what Jim Hart was thinking when Martin came free through there. Looks like he was going to lay him out. Please pull up. Don't hit me. <laughs> Which Harvey did. And now we got, what, two flags in the last three plays for St. Louis? This could be a tough quarter to get out alive with. Dallas going to put the pressure on. And again, we've talked about it before, Tom, and that is uh, avoiding that long yardage situation that you're forced to throw against that nickel defense. Tony Dorsett. Tim strap fastened, ready to go. Pressure doesn't seem to bother him, though, does it? <laughs> Not much. The leading rusher in the NFC. 13.07. Left to play third quarter. The Cardinals lead the Cowboys. 10-7. All right, Cole led the pressure, but Mel Gray catches the pass just a little bit, I believe, short of a first down. It is going to be very close. Boy, well, it's close, and I'll tell you that by keeping the safety man inside, you try to cut him off from getting that good post move that Mel Gray has. But he, he locked it up that time and took it up short and hard hitting, didn't he? That was the same pass that Charlie Waters just knocked down, a turn-in pattern, and Hart comes right back to it and delivered the ball on time this time to get the completion. It is a first down, by the way. They did not even measure. Big first down, huh, after the penalty? Ed Jones jumping up in front of Jim Hart. He did a heck of a job to get rid of that ball with that much accuracy under the pressure. What we may do, let's, let's watch Deardorff and Tutal this time. The big right tackle and the big defensive left end. Let's see what they've got going down there. That's almost 600 pounds <laughs> in two people. Swings around to the outside and a great open field tackle by Cliff Harris. Where did it come from? Charlie Waters in some kind of a dispute with uh, one of the bearers of the yard line marker. Now, you know, uh, defensive secondary people are they're, they're crazy about their possession, the field. You know what I mean? Don't come in my area. And, you know, they say do not live by intimidation, but... Nobody goes to dinner with the secondary guys. They go together. Nobody else in the team wants to be with them or something. It was always that way, at least when I played. Well, no wonder bad manners. <laughs> <laughs> no, not bad manners. It's just you're paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be second down. Hart drops. The rebound goes high in the air as Mike Heckman put the heat on Wayne Morris. I thought I saw Charlie Waters put Mel Gray up in the seats, but nobody nobody dropped a flag. Yeah, they're putting a lot of pressure on Hart, but yet they still have yet to sack him. And uh, that's one good thing you can say about that offensive line. You know, Sonny, he's always been very hard to get to. That's because he throws the ball. He throws to that outlet receiver. Let's see how Here they're again. doing, Sonny. Look at this pressure. Well, I don't think there is any of that much pressure from this side. Too tall being side, doubled. You see right there, Martin came in and forced him to throw the ball into the flat and throw it poorly, but uh, he still avoided the sack. Double team on Ed Jones, who just made a movie, by the way. Double McGuffin is the name of it. <laughs> and I think he's the double. Gray. Woo. Washington takes him out of bounds. Mel Gray makes the catch. I'll tell you one thing, the blitz that Dallas came with the blitz, and St. Louis really picks it up. Watch the linebackers now start to filter through on the blitz. In fact, here comes Barnes in the secondary. St. Louis really called the right play at the right time. So had that success right there, going Mel Gray against Washington. In a solo circumstance, when you send all the linebackers, it's hard to find help. Gray loves to play against them, doesn't he? Halftime score at the Meadowlands Giants Stadium, 17-3. Giants over San Francisco. Cardinal attack will not sink. That's a fumble covered by Roger Finney. Harvey Martin with the good effort. Well, Sonny said he almost got there the pass before. Now watching this time on the isolated camera. Let's let it play. Give Roger Finney some credit. He got beat badly on the block, 
What does he do? He comes back and makes a recovery. Looked to me like uh, the offensive line was laid off the ball. The center snapped it too soon. Watch it again. I can't figure out why Finney didn't try to cut him. He never even launched his body. And Hart, of course, has his back turned. You at least expect the truck to honk. Second down, 24 yards to go after the sack by Harvey Martin. 10-7, Cardinals lead. They fake a blitz. They run a draw. Good call. Wayne Morris tackled by Benny Barnes. Good smart call by Hart. I'll tell you one thing. The next call by Hart's going to be the one. This third and 15. This could be a big play. If they if you get foolish and throw it around, you get an interception. And I'll tell you right now, Cowboy defense is breathing hard. This is when you look to the sideline to get a little help and the coach <laughs> turns his back on you. <laughs> That's when he has something wrong with his headset. Yeah. He starts calling the press box. Third down, 17 yards they need. They pick up a first. They take a blitz. Charlie Waters. I thought he had the left arm around him for a minute, Pat, but they got away with it. Ramson was the intended receiver. Cardinals will have to punt. Hart got double coverage on Mel Gray. Harris and Waters both slipped over there. Now, if he has J.B. Cain as the tight end, it's a pretty potent pass play. Still wasn't enough for the first down, even if he makes a reception. They are double teaming both Harvey Martin and Too Tall Jones with a tackle and a back. That means those two guards are doing a heck of a job. Bob Young, Terry Steve. They try to block it. They don't get it. Fair catch call for by Butch Johnson, and Dallas will take over at their own 23. They trail still by three. Ten minutes, 40 seconds left to play third quarter. The St. Louis Cardinals leading Dallas 10-7. Surprising development that has left this capacity crowd in a state of shock. Dallas first down. Drew Pearson and Butch Johnson, the wide receiver, as Starbuck goes down quickly. Zucker got so close, he, the ball hit him on the shoulder pad. Yeah, that's unusual. He's really doing a job because that's aggressive tight blocking. By that, the offensive line is coming off the line of scrimmage aggressively. And for him to get down a very short pass, take a look at this. He takes a shot. He takes Zucker. the inside from Donovan and gets it. And John just goes inside very quickly gets to Roger. On a three-step pass, you want to have the time to get it off. Rogers 9 of 15 for 103 yards. And no interceptions, which is important. Bob with a 12-6-6 Boston Toronto. Dorset swings to the outside. And Tony D. Should have the first down. He just sort of gets it going, doesn't he? Doesn't look like the play's going to mean much, and he's got to be leaving a few people that would be in most defensive plays. Right now, he is limping back to the huddle just a bit. Jay Saldi was hurt earlier. Dorsett is going to walk back to the bench, and Duck Dennison comes in. Here we go. Here it is. Now he begins to stretch, and boy, he's got a long stride for a 190-pounder. In fact, they just got him by the ankle, and then <laughs> hit him a little late, but they were already a throw in and did not know where they oh, were. Oh, is that it? It's a defensive call. Going a little late, huh? He got the first down. He has been replaced by Doug Dennison. So it's Dennison and Newhouse behind Roger Starbuck now. Dennison. Maybe two. Started to say a minute ago that Jay Saldi had been hurt. It looks like Tony Hill might also have been hurt and out. Here it is. He just dips it and tries to get outside. Now, with number 33 carrying that ball, he probably makes the corner a little bit better than that. Dennison can play. He just doesn't get a chance to very much. Dr. Doom Bearfield. John Dr. Doom Bearfield. Rookie out of Texas A&I. Dr. Doom. This is Drew Pearson coming left. See. Billy Joe Tupri, the tight end. Did you say Bearfield writes poetry about his tackles? <laughs> Starbuck gives to Dennison. About two short of a first down. As again, the Cardinals had the blitz going. Tim Carney made the tackle on Dennison. 
Okay, from behind Roger Staubach, let's take a look at it. The blitz didn't get there. The ball was in over in, but made it in good shape. Cardinals are tackling well. Third down situation now for the Dallas Cowboys and Tom Landry. With his encouragement, third and two, 946 left to play third quarter. Cardinals fake a blitz and now do not. Staubach goes outside, Bruce Pearson is out of bounds. Perry Smith on the coverage and Dallas will have to punt. Now, a lot of people think that Perry Smith should be penalized for that, but when a guy's reaching for the ball right on the line, truthfully, there's no way the secondary man can not touch him. There is a penalty flag down, however, back in the Dallas backfield area. Bob Frederick talking to number 22, Captain Roger Worley. The Yankees four, Cleveland nothing. That's the final score. Offensive holding, number 71, declined, fourth down. Cardinals decline at holding Pendley against Andy Frederick. And just to capsule the baseball situation, the Yankees score is final 4 0. The Red Sox are in extra innings against Toronto, 6 6 in the 12th. I guess we should always remind everybody that Danny White, of course, is a very fine thrower. Every time he punts, there could be an option, I guess. Ooh. Again, Danny White catches it pure. Willie Shelby at the 10. Slipped by Guy Brown, gets outside the 20 to the 21, stopped by Robert Steele. The word on Tony Hill is that he has the strained hamstring muscle. And in all likelihood, he will not be back. 9.26 left third quarter. St. Louis 10, Dallas 7. Cardinals 10, Dallas 7. From the wishbone is Otis. Al Gray has six catches for 72 yards. And he makes you play double defense on him, whether you like it or not. Hey, Green Bay over San Diego in the third. 14-0. Whitehurst must be having a good day, huh? They must be catching them for a change, huh? <laughs> it's a star. That should be pretty happy. Four yard pickup by Otis on first down at second and six. 8.55 left to play third quarter. Otis and Jones. Randy White made the tackle. I like the Cardinal offensive game plan, though. They're not coming up with third and long this time. At least it's not going to be third and eight or ten. Jim Hart's called a good game. He's 11 out of 20 so far for 106 yards, a touchdown. No interceptions. They have third about a yard and a half, maybe, maybe two. And again, Brahaney comes in. As an eligible receiver, number 51 lined up as the tight end on the left side. Otis. Jones behind, and this is Jones. Oh. He will not get the first down. The tackle by Bob Brunig. He read the key. He read the guard, and watch this move. You're from right down on the line of scrimmage. It's the cross buck action, and I'm telling you, Brunig read it on the other side of the line of scrimmage, made contact. Now, you young people, if you use this kind of technique and use the shoulder and not the face, you're not going to get a hurt playing football. Slip by there and use that shoulder, and you can play a lot of football and not get hurt. Steve Little is number 12, who will punt for the Cardinals. Butch Johnson standing alone for Dallas. They almost blocked it. Bob Steele and Little hit a good one. Butch Johnson gets away from a couple, gets away from two more. Johnson gets out of bounds in front of the Dallas bench, but there is a flag down on the play, and flag there are two. Let me tell you, that Steve Little kicked a laser beam shot out of there, and I don't—I didn't think the ball was out. I thought it was blocked. Let's watch it. Goes through a uniform, I think, and comes right out the other side, blue and white. <laughs> Bob Steele almost blocked that one. Good run back and a couple of clips, I think. There were at least two flags. Looked like May Day. <laughs> he outkicked the coverage with this one. A walk-off against the Cowboys takes it back to the 14-yard line where Bob Frederick will let us know in just a second what happened. They were clipped on the kick return team. 
Somewhere in there, there it is. This one, Aaron Kyle got two of them with one clip. <laughs> That's why there were two flags. <laughs> that was just a little push. Does that mean you get penalized 30 yards? No. The line of scrimmage then will be back to Dallas 15. Don't forget the Woodward, the World Three Day Equestrian Championships. I'm into Ball. that. You know what? That dressage, I really like that horsemanship. Stuff. You're into that? Yes, yes, <laughs> Big on leather saddles, I'll tell you that. Next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 Central. Didn't know you were into that. Drew Pearson in motion. Roger Staubach gives back to Dorsett, who had a bruise in his leg. Dallas got the ball back. Dorsett lost it for just a moment. Hey, he can snake through about a half of, about eight inches wide the hole, and he just goes... And pops right through it, doesn't he? The official word from the Dallas bench is that Tony Dorsett had a strained calf muscle, and right now Rayfield Wright is joining the offensive group for the Cowboys, and out goes Butch Johnson. So Rayfield Wright will apparently line up as a tight end. He does on the right side. Six and a half minutes left to play third quarter. Cardinals up by three. Dorset oh. tried to get the first down and really took a walk. Tim Carney. Boy, he's been hitting people. He'll hit you while you're warming up. Carney will. That's no kidding. He's done that before, and he can really tackle. How about this for a little bit of strategy? Bring in Rayfield Wrights. Put him in a tight end. Set him right, and then run left. Well, Jay Saldy can't play now with a broken That's bone. Huh? Saldy is out. Normally, he would have been in that position. Now it's third down, the Cowboys. Tight end, Billy Joe Dupree, this time lined up on the right side. From a regular formation, Starbuck drops and throws. Drew Pearson had it and dropped it. Well, he loves that clearing pattern where Dupree takes it straight up and cuts it out, and then he comes sliding through the middle. And I don't know if I've seen him drop many coming across the middle like that. At the first down, too. Classy guy, Drew Pearson. Give this Cardinal defense some credit for it. They come in and stopped him. Held Dallas seven points here. And Danny White, who's had a heck of a day punting. His last one was 53 yards. Stands back at about his own six, Willie Shelby. Number 30, the Cardinals. They blocked it. It's going to be a Cardinal touchdown if they can run it down. If it goes out of the end zone, it'll be a safety. Jim Thaxton blocked it. I think Scott Laidlaw is the one that knocked it out of the end zone, and that's one of the great plays that probably will go unknown for the year. In hot pursuit was number 58 for the Cardinals, John Bearfield. Dr. Doom in chase, and here's the block. And Danny White looked around the line of scrimmage a lot before that punt. Now the ball goes, and watch Laidlaw come from nowhere and slip under here and scoot it out. Here it is again from behind the punter, Danny White. The Cardinals, after that safety, move out to a five-point lead now, 12 to 7. After the block punt by the Cardinals, the ball going out of the end zone, the Cardinals lead now by 5, 12, 7, 5, 40 left to play third quarter. And a free kick, but I have seldom seen somebody get a safety and not take advantage of it and come back on offense because you get pretty good field position on the run back. Danny White to keep that ball, knock it out of the end zone, and keep him from getting a touchdown. Danny White to punt it. A high kick that should come up with good coverage. Willard Harrell fields it. And you're right. They'll have it at about the 40. Aaron Kyle made the tackle on Willard Harrell. Where the Cardinals. Surprising all day as you look out through the top of Texas Stadium and into this packed house. Pat, they've held that Cardinal defense is holding that rushing to about 85 yards Dallas has. That's an incredible job. They, they get a game ball, they may have to split it up about 
12 ways to Roger Staubach has hit only one out of his last seven pass attempts. Five and a half minutes left to go third quarter. Wayne Morris, Steve Jones, the backs. Jim Hart goes for Mel Gray, overthrows him. Washington right back there with him. Mark Washington, he's had a tangle with some pretty good people this time. I'll never forget Lynn Swan that day in the Super Bowl, and Washington had him covered, and he still caught the big ones. Remember that day? Oh, gosh, yeah. Well, Hart did a good job then looking uh, coverage off. He actually looked like he wanted to throw the ball in the flat to the to the left and came right back and threw the long pass to uh, Gray going down the sidelines on the right side. Jim Hart, 13-year veteran from Southern Illinois. 17. Also a class guy. Morris with Harris from the secondary. The Giants, in an effort to go three and one, lead the San Francisco 49ers 24-3. They'll be here in two weeks. They'll be in Atlanta next week. The Giants will. This is a big play right here. I, I just have a feeling that Dallas is thinking interception. Big turnover now. They got the extra defensive backs in. Randy Hughes and Benny Barnes. One linebacker. That's Mike Hickman. And the front four including now Larry Cole. They hit Hart's arm. It is caught by Ramson on his back. And Hart is back on his back. I don't think that uh, number 80 even realized he had the ball. It came right by a couple of diving hands. A super throw, really, by Hart because he was already going down, I think. I gets it in here. I'll never know. Let's take a look at it. There's Ramson, the young tight end. And he was going down on one knee as he threw the ball. The ball deflects off of Charlie Waters' shoulder, and Harris comes by. Watch Dude. this. It hits him on his shoulder, I think. That's some catch. What, what a, a catch. catch. By Ramson. First down, Cardinals at the Dallas 32. Nothing doing on first down as Wayne Morris tries. Stopped by a middle linebacker, Bob Brunick. Hart's not afraid to put it up, I'll say that. What an effort on his part, throwing the ball going down the way he did, Tom. When you did that, it just seemed like the other guys would pick up the well, I'd ray. You get up in a hurry because you know they're coming back the other way with it. <laughs> Hart is 12 out of 22. And some remarkable acrobatics by some of his receivers and by Hart himself. The handoff is to Morris. Stacked up again by Cliff Harris with some help from underneath by Mark Washington. Not doing a bad job blocking two tall Jones this afternoon. Deardor's hanging pretty tough on that side because Waters is coming up very quickly to turn the play in, and there's just not much uh, support from the backside of that play. The thing you have to love about somebody like Dan Deardorff to, to get up and play a game like this when he wasn't expected to play and to play as well as he has. Yeah, he wasn't. He was scratched all week, though. Hey, team is 0-3. You figure, hey, we're going against Dallas. It's a tough game to play. He didn't duck it. Third down five. Hart, this time with good protection, has got a man open. Mel Gray cut it down the sideline, a square out and up, and he had everybody beaten. So he couldn't catch up with the football. Can Real he tough run? pass to throw, though. Oh, but can he run? I, I, you know, I know it was an incomplete pass. The last eight or ten yards after he got by Kyle, he was really a blur. Mel can really turn it on. Roger Worley now kneeling back at the 34-yard line. So it'll be a 44-yard effort by Jim Bakken. Bakken counting to make sure that the Cardinals have got enough players. They did not have, and as Thaxton comes in, they call a timeout. That could hurt. Smart call to call a timeout, too, because they didn't want to be penalized five yards and have to kick it a little out of Jim's range. This is right on the edge of Jim's <laughs> range right here. Right about this. Remember, he had one earlier from 47 that didn't quite get there. And if they had had to been penalized, that would have taken it back to about 47. When do you determine your range? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Before the game? Yes, I think so. World Series of Golf, don't forget. Next Saturday, 
Eastern time and next Sunday four Eastern time. Heading the field, which is a spectacular one, are Nicholas Watkins, Andy Bean, Andy North, John Mahaffey, the whole bunch. This will be a 44-yard effort by Jim Bakken with Roger Worley holding. Blocked by Dallas. Randy Hughes, I believe, number 42. And Jim Otis kicked it out of bounds. Looking back, Otis pops it out of bounds, and that's going to be the line of scrimmage. Randy Hughes, I think you're right, Tom, was the blocker. There were a couple that were right there. There you are, Pat. This is your replay. You do this when the kickers love this. That was quick enough. <laughs> The ball looked like it was high enough, but the rush was just too good. They got inside the outside wingman, and that's what caused it to be blocked. If they can get that short run at it. They have a pretty good mm -hmm. chance. They split it, didn't they? If they make them go around the outside, they have very little chance of blocking it. Goes back to the line of scrimmage. Otis kicked it out of bounds, but once the kick was blocked, all that was not able to factor it comes back to the original line of scrimmage which is now the Dallas 26 and a half yard line two minutes 19 seconds left to play third quarter Atlanta nine Tampa Bay seven third quarter Preston Pearson and Robert Newhouse the backs Let's screen bounces in front of Preston Pearson well, I'll tell you, Dawson, the nose man, really hustled that time. Fitzgerald let him through on the screen. But watch how fast the screen comes through. Now, the quarterback doesn't want him breathing down his neck this fast, where Roger can't even get the screen pass off. They had it set up pretty good. He just underthrows him a little bit. Is that touch, do you think? And I hear a little cute booze in the stands right. here. Mike Dawson is 270 pounds, the nose man for that Cardinal 3-4 defense from Arizona. He's done a good job today with John Fitzgerald in front of him. Call back again under pressure. Butch. Butch Johnson by Roger Worley. Man, that's throwing cork. That's one of the best throws Roger's had in a couple of weeks, I'll tell you. Sonny, he really a lot of pressure on this though. Watch him going back. Come with a blitz again. He knows He's trying what to he put wants. some heat on. Look how many people are back there. Red shirts around him. Oh, I like that throw. Both the inside linebackers on a blitz. Third down, about three. It's not been a very pleasant afternoon for one Roger Starbuck. He's 11 out of 20. He may have to throw again. Quick sideline flutter ball is caught by Drew Pearson. What a catch. Hit by Perry Smith, but a great catch from Drew Pearson. What a catch is right. Well, if you own the team, wouldn't you like to have about 45 free agents like Drew Pearson? Watch this catch, and he gives himself up. Right now, you can have him, boy. The receiver has no chance, just takes the shot. He makes the catch, though, doesn't he? Head snapped back when he hit. The artificial surface, but it is a Dallas first down. Still tied, Boston, Toronto, 6-6, bottom of the 13th. The Yankees have already won. Dorsett gets away from him. Turns it on down the sideline. Dorsett out of bounds with the St. Louis 35, Tim Carney. Very few people can make it look this easy. Watch Arneson come across. And Dorsett just steps over him and doesn't lose much. That's the difference. And now it looks like everybody else about three-quarter speed, doesn't it? Tremendous block by Newhouse. Oh, yeah, on Arneson. That's what sprung it. And Dorsett, as Tom Brookshire said, just stepped right away from him. Dallas in Cardinal territory at their 34, trailing by five at St. Louis 12. The Cowboys seven. Dorsett a new house. It'll be a Dallas timeout. Dorsett has 85 yards now on 12 carries, so he's beginning to, you know, get the high frequency hum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this timeout. I don't either, Sonny. Could be a mix up again. We saw that last week. Mix up again and what he had at the line of scrimmage and what he wanted to do. 
I think you ought to use all the timeouts. I used to hate the coaches that saved all the timeouts. At the end of the game, you had three timeouts to trade in. <laughs> if you could save them for the following week. Take a whole quarter off by the end of the season. Right. There has been not too much to cheer about. Next week, Minnesota Vikings will be at Tampa Bay. Buccaneers have already beaten the Vikes once. The Giants against Atlanta. The Cardinals will be at Miami. And thinking about last Thanksgiving Day, I'm sure, that massacre. Detroit against Green Bay. Los Angeles, New Orleans. Philadelphia against Baltimore. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Hey, my old Eagles are playing pretty good football right now. For a couple of years there, I denied that I ever played with them. They're beginning to whoop and holler a little bit, aren't they? What about Joe Theismann and the Redskins? He was 21 out of 29 today. And Riggins again had 114 yards. They are 4-0 now. Here at Texas Stadium, a minute 18 seconds left to play in the third quarter as Dorsett goes down in the arms of Tim Carney. That time, Newhouse couldn't handle Nails, the linebacker, came up and just sort of stopped the play. But you know, Dorsett scares you when he walks back like he's bruised. Because then he does one of those 20-yard sprints real fast, you know. Don't feel sorry for him too long. Don't let him see your eyes watering. <laughs> Detroit 16, Seattle 7. That's a third-quarter score. The Lions 1 and 2 going into this week. Could get even at 500. Butch Johnson starts back on the outside trap and goes up and it work. And for the 10 yard line, Perry Smith. Guess who just went over 100 yards? Yeah, Jimmy Brown did the same thing. He used to always be almost not getting back to the huddle. And then it looks like uh, the 100 meter finals in the Olympics as soon as they shoot the gun off. Look at this. Butch. Here's the hole. It's sort of a quick, it's a quick draw where Stallback takes it back to the back. Kind of a roll draw. He fakes to the fullback and rolls out. And boy, he makes some good moves downfield. That is the end of a third quarter with the score. The St. Louis Cardinals 12. Dallas Cowboys 7. Has replaced Dorsett, but Newhouse struggles inside the 10 to about the 9. Remember, this is sort of Billy Joe Dupree country, too. Yep. Tight end loves to get down a wedge between a couple of medium-sized secondary people and pluck that ball. He has caught a touchdown pass in every game so far this year. Good That's movement that time by the defense, uh, Steve Niels. What were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. They give Newhouse two yards. It doesn't look like quite that much. It'll be second down, though, just inside the 10. For the Dallas Cowboys, who trail by five. Cardinals could look good. Starbuck rolls and looking in the direction of Newhouse. Dodger was no Dodger. He put his head down that time and got drilled, but he took it forward, didn't he? You Mark think? Arneson made the tackle. A lot of options on this, Tom. You think he wanted to throw it? I think he was looking for somebody to throw to. Good block by Donovan, who I think came back, peeled back. Look at him put it down here and then go forward. Pretty yeah. good effort. Say. Just the way Sonny used to turn it right in toward the end zone. Well, I'll never forget it. It'll be third down. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Dorsetta Newhouse behind Staubach. Dallas cuts down by the house. Rafferty and Frederick really blow into the end zone. Watch the left part of your picture. Rafferty pulls. Power gets taken down by Frederick. Opened the hole up. Went through standing. How many times does that happen? The 
Raphael Septien with Charlie Waters holding. D.D. Lewis snapping. <laughs> Dallas 14. St. Louis Cardinals 12 at Texas Stadium. Raphael Septien is number one. Dallas leads by two now after that touchdown by Robert Newhouse. Set up by two spectacular runs by Dorsett. Off to the right side. Uh, Septien's kickoff will now come from the 30. I keep thinking back to Scott Laidlaw chasing that ball out of the end zone. It was a very big play instead of getting. It would have been 17-14 now if he doesn't do that. The Giants 27, San Francisco 3 in the third quarter. I wonder where O.J. Simpson is. Must have gone to the airport looking for a car or something. Went back to Buffalo. <laughs> Robert Steele got hurt on that kickoff. The uh, only free agent to make the Cowboy team. Hurt his ankle. He is from North Alabama. Is that a school you mean? Oh, yes, it is. It used no, to be known as <laughs> it used to be known as Florence State, which produced one of the best pass receivers ever to come into pro football, a guy named Harlan Hill. Never heard of him. I, I used to chase that dude. He ran by you so many so, times. <laughs> I looked like a traffic director with Harlan Hill. 17-3, the Green Bay score now over San Diego. As Raphael Septien will now have to kick off from the 30-yard line. Good kick. Oh, I'll tell you, he chases them all the way back to the one-yard line, and that's Willie Shelby. Yeah, Shelby with a good kickoff return out to the 32. Benny Barnes, who Tom Landry says is the best in football on special teams, which is a pretty powerful is statement. Is that right? Yes. How important they are. And now the drive for a possible field goal. A two point difference in this contest with 13 minutes, three seconds left to play. It'll be first and 10, St. Louis to the ball at their own 32. Detroit 16, Seattle 14. Jim Zorn and group on the way back. Cowboys go into the flex pass defense. Oh, it's Wayne Morris. To midfield. Covered by Mark Washington, but Jim Hart has thrown the ball very, very well. And Sonny, this is a good play because you see all the receivers as you're sort of looking that way. You have a deep one, Tilly, in the corner, and you have the short man, which is the swing back. Shows you the confidence he has, Tom. He's coming back, throwing on first down here. Good time to throw against Dallas. And finding uh, Mars coming out of the backfield. Good why do call, you, good throw. Why do you say it's a good time to throw against Dallas? When they play the flex, they only have two men that can rush. Excellent point. 12.57 left to play now as Morris gets the call and the carry and hops and skips for about eight yards. Some move he made in the line of scrimmage. Wasn't it? Bruni thought he had him zeroed in. Yeah, Jones made the tackle. You're right behind the Cardinal offense now. Watch what happens. See Banks and Young and those people to the left. Look at this move. Kangaroo time. <laughs> Second and three. They shift out of the wishbone into a regular pro set. Otis. Tackle in the backfield by D.D. Lewis. There's a guy that only plays well every week, right? Very I he, steady. I bet he grades out as well as any linebacker in football. And the Cowboys, they go by a grading system. It was like your mom used to have you on when you were going to school. You get stars and big cars and things if you do things right the way Dee does. <laughs> Taking out Dee Dee and Brunick right now. And Benny Barnes has come in, going to the nickel defense. Pat Tilly comes wide left. Mel Gray just at the top of your picture. Hart under pressure and he's hit from behind by Harvey Martin. Wow. Harvey Martin went right through Jim Hart from behind. 
Pat, you're so right. What's number 79? Benny drives him all the way back around, and he made the back door again. Oh, he's quick. It'll be fourth down, Cardinals. Cardinals have already blocked the punt. Here is Jim Hart, who has taken a couple of real tough shots. Most of them from Harvey Martin. 13 for 25, Patrick, for 150 yards. Steve Little stands at his own 40. Butch Johnson stands at his own 10. Charlie Waters came close to getting it. Butch goes up with a fair catch signal, and the ball takes a sideways bounce and a St. Louis bounce. Down by number 40 for the Cardinals, Doug Green, and the Cowboys will have a long way to go. They lead, however, with 11 minutes, 28 seconds left to play. Cowboys 14, Cardinals 12. We'll be right back. Word on Robert Steele is that he has a twisted left ankle. Questionable whether or not he'll be able to return. The Cowboys are now down to just three wide receivers. Two wide receivers and one tight end. Billy Joe Dupree here is Dorsett. Cutting back. Outside the 20 near first down yardage is Tony Dorsett. Boy, Rafferty he really makes a block, doesn't he? Number 64 comes out on the cornerback, Patrick. Watch the left part of the screen. Young man from Penn State who really has fit into the Cowboy way of life. Look at the block on 45. Just cut him down. Clean down. Big block by Scott, I believe, too, wasn't it? It was lawless, lawless. I think. That's 116 yards for Tony Dorsett. 15 carries. That'll help his average. It only helps if you win him, though, right? Nine-yard pickup by Dorsett. Last year's Rookie of the Year. Roger Starbuck still the quarterback, has been all day. He gives to Newhouse. Newhouse and struggles. Near a first down stop by Randy Gill, but Newhouse <laughs> has incredible balance. Newhouse must have thought everybody had taken off. Watch when he starts to the right, he has some friendly people around, white and blue. He gets turned around here now and takes it back. Now watch what happens. It's nothing but red and white. He doesn't have a friend in sight right now, does he? Got to be one of the most difficult guys to tackle in football. Not a for 10 of you. <laughs> 10 minutes, 40 seconds left to play now. The Cowboys up by two. Sonny Jurgensen, Tom Brookshire, Pat Summerall at Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, watching the Cowboys struggle with the Cardinals. Door set. 4-5. Bob Pollard converged on the outside spot, but Dorsett gets there so quickly. I think Bud Wilkinson's done one of the best coaching jobs I've ever seen. I cannot believe how competitive and tough this defense is playing. They're playing that 34 for the first time, and he had a lot of offense go when Metcalf took off for Canada. I think they are really a darn good football team to watch. Bud Wilkinson's got some great assistants on that staff of his. Tom Bettis, Pete Elliott, Rudy Feldman, Harry Gilmer, Freddie Glick. Jim Hannafin and Jerry Thompson. Dupree shuffles off to the left side in motion. Dorsett almost fell down. Regained his balance. And he is out for another Dallas first down to the 45. What acceleration. Well, I think that if I was playing against him, I would make him weight him like a jockey. He's just playing a different game than everybody else. He staggers here and almost loses the ball. Now watch this turn on. I'm telling you, there's just no way you can get enough people out in the outside areas to compensate for that. Well, the best thing to do if you start to chase him is fall down and get out of the picture. Yeah, or pull up with a hamstring or something. <laughs> Look Wait. at this speed. Jim Carney got him out of bounds. Butch Johnson did a tremendous job, and he took uh, Perry Smith out of bounds and uh, allowed him to cut up the field the way he could. Doug Dennison has replaced Dorsett now. But Newhouse gets the call. And Newhouse swings around. He's got a block to. Newhouse has another Dallas first down inside the 40. Kurt Alderman. Boy, Billy Joe Dupre, the tight end, really got a block, Patrick. Watch to the right part of your screen now. Watch 89, Dupre, the tight end. Finally get into a position where he has to cut. There he is. Gets Worley off his feet and open it up for number 44. 
Boy, he is tough to tackle, Sonny. You're right. He gets the most out of every play, doesn't he? Sure. Mike Sensabaugh is finally the Cardinal who made the tackle, but Dallas rolling on the ground now with nine minutes left to play. They still have Dennison with Newhouse in the backfield. Drew Pearson in motion, and Dennison gets the fake. Dorsett hits Drew Pearson. Drew breaks a couple of tackles, and down to the 15 goes Drew Pearson. Out of the grasp of Roger Worley. That's, that's the man in motion play that I really like. They bring Drew Pearson. He's actually coming back in motion toward the line. Slips across and under. He comes across like a, you know, just like a silent. There's no noise or anything. He just slips through there. Same play in the first half. He overthrew him. That's the same play that scored the first touchdown in Super Bowl X. Mike. When Dallas lost to Pittsburgh. You're absolutely right. Very good, Patrick. I'd have never gotten that one. <laughs> At the 15. Newhouse should get in. Sonny, did the fake, did the fake that Roger make got the linebacker out of there? They went a blitz. You see the blitz right there in front of them. That's why there's a man supposed to be covering. Free safety couldn't get over to pick up Newhouse. What a call, huh? That's Landry making that call. He calls them all. <laughs> Raphael Septien will try to make it 21-12. And does. Touchdown. Good looking drive, that one. Raphael stepped in to kick off to Willard Harrell, number 39, and Willie Shelby, number 30. Stepped in, hits this one well. It'll be Harrell, about six yards deep to the end zone. Stepped in. Gets the applause, and Seattle gets the lead over Detroit, 21-16 in the fourth quarter. This is one of the great football stadiums in America, though. As far as I'm concerned, the, when the hometown crowd has something to cheer about, it is really something, isn't it? A lot of the noise stays inside. <laughs> you have to think that Cardinal defense in that last drive, seven plays, 88 yards, have to be getting a little tired. 53 seconds left to play. Card will shift to one lone setback. It's going to be an option, a left-handed option by Little Harrell. He tucks it away and now stays on his feet. Chased out of bounds by Randy White. But he had it throwing in mind. I wonder if he's left-handed. He is left-handed. He looks like he was taking it up the throw with his left hand. He better be. <laughs> The beautiful Harvey Martin show in the morning. He plays good sound and talks to people. And off the field, Patrick, he is one of the nicest guys. But I'm telling you, he's something on Sunday afternoon, isn't he? Or Thursday or whenever he wants to play. He said he's had to work. He never feels like he's he's as good as he can be if he works hard. It's an incredible idea. The yeah. lineman can turn loose and go to the passer. When the Cardinals went front, you didn't see that much pressure on Hart. Good point. Little. Line drive kick. Feel it in the air by Brooke Johnson. He saved about 20 yards by taking that thing in the air. Got out to the 46 where the Cowboys will take over. Dave Steep made the tackle. The Dallas lead. 21 12. 6.54 left to play. The banners are out. Rogers, the Dodger, did not turn out to be the Dodger. Hey, he put his head down to pick up one crucial bit of yardage earlier to set up the Dallas go-ahead touchdown. He is still the quarterback. Dorsett and Newhouse behind him. 14 of 23, Pat, for 163 yards for Roger throwing. Newhouse against that fatiguing St. Louis defense, as Sonny Jurgensen said before. And the house gets inside Cardinal territory. Cowboys are right at 200 yards rushing the football. And again, with Dorsett getting 100 and something, Newhouse always chips in and 
200 yard rushing it's got to help your offensive system huh Boston now leads Toronto 7 6 at the top of the 14th inning they trail the Yankees by one the Yankees have already won so if they can hang on to that that's the way it'll stay or sets going to get around to the outside and look for some place to go and not find it That Cardinal defense has really played a lot of football today. Sort of got staggered a little bit in his own backfield. Like he's just waiting for daylight and he wants to take off and he didn't find any then, went on out of bounds. 6.09 on the clock. Burton Lawless checks in. Roger will throw it this time. You think? Yes. Third and four. Cardinal 47, the line of scrimmage. Cardinals trail the Cowboys 21 12. Texans good. The line drive from Starbuck was right there. Drew Pearson. Honestly, it was in pretty good shape, though. You can't hit people in that beyond that five yard zone, but the linebackers can get back to their position safely, and he sort of ran, got tangled up a little bit with Drew. The way things are going at the moment, you must keep in mind that Danny White, the Dallas punter, is also a quarterback and also a fine athlete, can run. He has the option himself. Also, don't forget that the Cardinals have already blocked one Danny White punt. And you go back to that point that Tom Brookshire made about Scott Laidlaw hustling that ball out of the end zone to make it a safety instead of a touch. Fine high kick in the direction of Willie Shelby. Is out of sight. That's got to be Aaron Kyle. And the timing was good. He didn't hit him early. He waited for Shelby to take it on the run. Now, what do you do offensively, Sonny? You're, you've never been in this position, but you're you're down 21 to 12. Now we were usually down more than this. <laughs> now will he really have to flex the the receivers and now, really start not, throwing. There's it. plenty of time left. There's no. He doesn't have to change his strategy right here in any way. Uh, stay with your normal game plan. I'm sure that he talked with the coaches on the sidelines and got some information from upstairs or something they might want to do. Here's Jim Hart, and that's Pat Tilly. Like that. Another great throw from Hart and right in that Tilly scene. Well, Tilly's got the softest darn hands, you know. He's from what Louisiana Tech. I don't know how many people have come from there that have played in this league, but watch to the left part of your screen now. There's one named Bradshaw. Well, that's a pretty good hand. You're right. But look at these. That's a pretty darn tough catch in the dead run through there. Just a little quick post that he ran, and he split the uh, free safety in the cornerback. Big catch and a very accurately thrown football. Doomsday, they say, is a heartbreaker. But today, Jim Hart has hung with him. Five, ten left to play now. Steps in. That's Mel Gray's open. Out of bounds by Cliff Harris. What a, at about the 21. What a great pass, huh? Right between the double men, the up man and the deep man. Mel Gray gets a swerve, and he can't touch him anymore. Mark checks for the ball, which is a mistake. Good throw, Sonny. Excellent. He again splitting the zone, and he just lays it up. Makes a very. Good, that's the seventh catch for Gray, but he had it right on the money. Good protection, too. He's had some great days against Dallas. Bill Gray has. He loves to play against them, doesn't he? Well, he there are a lot 12. of places he likes to play. <laughs> 12 TDs, I think, against the Dallas Cowboys so. over the years. Hart. Just over the outstretched hand of Jim Childs this time. I'm telling you, Gray was open again on the left side of the field. Hart went to the other side to Charles, but he had Gray wide open again. Looks like Jimmy's getting a little advice on the sidelines this time. He's probably uh, looking over for a little bit of a help, huh? You he got a lot from George Allen, didn't you, when you looked over there? George, <laughs> tell you anything? He was talking to the defense at the time. <laughs> Mel Gray has caught 12 touchdown passes in the last eight games against the Cowboys. That's one for me. <laughs> Six left to play. Ball at the 26. Morris 
tries to cut back inside. Cut down by Charlie Waters and cut almost in two by Randy White. Dallas defense is really fighting now. I think they thought the game might have been finished. And St. Louis suddenly got their attention again. Morris is really taking some shots today by uh, leaping in the air. Roger Staubach. You know he was a straight A student wherever he's been. Whatever he's done. They start in the wishbone and now they get out of it. Kansas City used to do that, as they say. Hart's got room. He's got Gray. He had it. Mel Gray took a blow from Randy Hughes just as he cut into the end zone. He was really hit. Well, there used to be a lot of hard feelings between Cliff Harris and Waters and Mel Gray, but watch this. I think that Mel may have looked up to see where everybody was when he crosses in there. The ball is right on. See if he glances up right to see who was coming across. It was Randy Hughes. Well, he, he found out. It was pretty well thrown. Another drop ball. It, uh, that was a touchdown, and that's something, boy, when things are going badly for you, that's what happened. Bakken lines it. And pulls it left. Not good. He has missed two and had one block and made one. Don't forget the CBS Sports Spectacular, the Woodward Live from Belmont Park next week. The World Three Day Equestrian Championships next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 Central and Pacific. The CBS Sports Spectacular. Bud Wilkinson's thinking about the team it's 0 and 3 or 0 and 4 but I'm telling you they're pretty good hard hitting football team. They keep asking Bud Wilkinson why he came back to coach again after being out of it for so many years 15 from the University of Oklahoma and he keeps saying I never lost touch. I still know what the game is about or set a new house behind Staubach and what about this call. We got some room over here. Everybody quit running their pattern then. Roger had to take off and run with the thing. Bob Pollard got him down. There's Cliff Harris. Looks like he's been in a 15 round fight. Got a cut lip, I believe, huh? Or no. nose. Why has the trainers always had such big hands? You never, when they were always trying to look in your mouth for something that they couldn't even see past their knuckles. Mo. Look at the size of the hands. <laughs> Flunked out of dental school, know. huh? I never thought about that. <laughs> trainers have big hands. <laughs> Here's Dorsett spinning back into the inside in the hands and arms of Randy Gill. Clock shows now three minutes, 20 seconds left to play. Score is 21-12 Dallas. Third seven it'll be. Cowboys at 193 yards rushing. And I'm trying to check out the aerial yardage. It's I think about 163, Tom. Roger Staubach, 14 out of 24. That's right. Butch Johnson split wide to the right. Drew Pearson left, and now Preston Pearson into the Dallas backfield on third down, seven yards to go. They show him the shotgun. Preston. Dives for the Dallas first down. Well, I always used to say that nobody set up better to throw it than Jergerson with his feet. And Roger shifts to the left on this and gets away from a blocker. You're from behind now the Cardinal defense. Watch the move from the right now as he gets a little heat from Zook. Watch him shift to the left. And he's ready to throw it. He's got it ready. Sonny, it's a good throw. Tremendous balance throwing the ball and delivering it. He had good protection. The man is still, you wonder how he gets open all the time. And you say this every week, Preston Pearson. And now Cliff Harris, who must have a hamstring problem, based on that bandage. Boy, oh, they've taken a beating today. Cardinals, fortunately, who came into this game with a rash of injuries. They stripped Harris of everything. They got him his, his face, his hair. Everything's gone. His hair was hurt. <laughs> Dallas leads St. Louis 
Cardinals have not won this year. But that's hard to understand after you watch how respectable and how tough they've played today. 1 1 12, the Cowboys lead. Their record would go to 3 and 1. Seattle in command over Detroit. Here's Dorsett again. Hit a little tiny seam. John Zook closed it up and off. Every darn play is a potential game breaker, though, you know. If he'd have popped through there and that one tackle hadn't have been put on securely, he, he can go. We got about 140 yards now. 142 yards, well, 141 or something. Serious uh, looking in that fame, neighborhood. Huh? 20 carries, 143. Won't hurt his NFC leading average. Big thing for Roger today are the INTs. He had seven coming in, which is used to be about a season for him. I and think he's only two, Tom, from having, uh, you know, he had nine. Uh, the whole season? A whole season. is only two short of that already in, in uh, three games. And he's none today, though. Then really be careful. You were talking about that yesterday, about the guys who are having the interceptions this year. Guys like Tarkenton, Bradshaw. guys like Starbuck, Bradshaw, Stabler. I mean, yeah, Stabler. It's hard to understand with the chucking roll, too, because the receivers are allowed to run the pattern downfield instead of having to change your pattern as a defensive back wants to do. Here's Thomas Henderson, who would have been starting at linebacker. Washington. Hollywood, they call it. He's, He's out with an an ankle injury that he suffered two weeks ago. He said he was ready to play today. <laughs> look at there, didn't funny he? looking shoe. <laughs> or come up to the booth with us. He likes television too, you know. <laughs> Second and eight situation as Drew Pearson goes in motion and Dorsett gets the fake handoff. Newhouse gets the pass. The house gets to midfield. That's the touchdown pass that they threw at the other end of the field when they scored. Newhouse still down on the ground. The recognition on this play is so good by uh, Roger because. Uh, they came with a blitz again, and, and when he rolls on that little draw fake, he has to be able to pick up that linebacker immediately to throw that pass. Now, if they don't blitz, can he go for the guy in the corner like Butch Johnson was running a fly to the yes, corner? Yes, yes. You know, we talked a lot about Dorsett, but Newhouse has averaged just about five yards a carry all day. Final score, Boston 7, Toronto 6, 14 innings. The Yankees beat Cleveland 4 nothing. Gidry pitched another two-hitter. So the margin of difference is still one. The Yankees by one. With a week to go in the regular baseball season. Not over yet. Boston's not going to quit, are they? If they didn't run and hide after <laughs> three weeks ago, after the business with the Yankees in Fenway Park, they won't quit now. Third down, it looks like uh, a foot. Good time to pop one right here. Door set inside the 40. He ran by a couple of potential tacklers that, that didn't know he had the ball, I don't believe. He made the cut so quick. All right, let's look at it. Now watch him. He just cuts it back, leaves his blocker, says, see you later. Spins away. Roger Worley makes the tackle. He hangs in there pretty tough, number 22 does. The door set goes to the sidelines now. That might be all for him for the day. 154 yards and 21 carries. 40 seconds left to play now, less than that. As Newhouse just uh, struggles to hang on in the arms of John Zook. Charles Milton III has been our producer. Directed by Sandy Grossman, our associate producer, and the rest of the people. Led by Buck Talley, who will always make our job seem like it's a, just an afternoon at the, in the living room. There's something about Dallas that, you know, it's exciting. Yeah. The people around the team, the teams that come in here, the cheerleaders, the whole thing. Just one great shooting match. 30 seconds left to go. Cowboy fans starting to sift out of the stands now. They think the Cowboys have it locked, and indeed, they could be right. Cowboys did a quarterback duck just to run out the clock. 20 seconds still remaining on the clock. The ball at the St. Louis 37. Dallas leads by nine. 
That's the last play of the game. They can let the clock run out now. So you, the Cardinals are a better football team than an 0 and 4 football team. Baby, I'll tell you, they're a class, they're a class team. I'll tell you, Bud Wilkinson's going to do some good. A little scramble going on back, back about midfield for the football. But that's all over now. 21-12. Pat Summerall with Sonny Jurgensen and Tom Brookshire as Tom Landry. An offensive mistake can really hurt the Dallas.